Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Blue Rat Creativity combo deck that's based off of the Pioneer build that did well in this weekend's Pro Tour. Of course, Pioneer has a slightly different card pool than Explorer at the moment, so instead of winning with Xenagos and World Spine Worm, we're casting Creativity for X equals 2 to assemble Sage of the Falls alongside the Locust God, which will be able to make infinite 1 1 insect tokens with Flying and Haste to win on the spot. It's not technically infinite since you draw a card for every time you make an insect token, so you're limited by the size of your library, but usually can make enough insects to win on the spot if we cast creativity for x equals 2. And of course to do that we need some treasure tokens or some other artifacts or creature tokens that we can target with creativity. The only creatures in the deck are Sage and Locust God, so we're guaranteed to find them if we don't have them in hand. And if we do happen to draw our two combo pieces, we can always put them on the bottom of our deck using either Fire Prophecy, which can deal 3 damage and then put a card from our hand on the bottom and draw card, or we can can use Falakut Awakening if we don't want to use it as a land to put any number of cards from our library on the bottom and then draw that many cards plus one. So that's a way to still get rid of our combo pieces since we don't want to discard them. They still need to be in our deck for us to be able to find them with creativity. And then the rest of our deck is kind of your typical blue-red control deck. We've got some cheap spot removal and compared to the Pioneer build which is designed for best of three, I've added way more cheap spot removal as opposed to counter spells since the best of one meta tends to be creature focused and quite a aggressive, so I prefer having spot removal as opposed to counter spells. So we've got 4 copies of Voltage Surge, can deal 2 or 4 if we sacrifice an artifact. 4 copies of Fiery Impulse, a recent addition in Explorer, can deal 3 damage if we enable Spell Mastery, if we have 2 or more instants and sorceries in the graveyard, which we can easily do. And then a Spikefield Hazard, perfect for taking out an early mana elf, but can also be played as a tap land. Then at 2 mana we can cast an Impulse at instant speed to still keep up our author interaction, and then look at the top 4 cards of our library, put one in our hand, the rest on the bottom. So Impulse can also potentially see one of the combo pieces and then be guaranteed to put it on the bottom, which is a good feeling, so you don't accidentally draw one of the combo pieces on the turn you're planning to combo off, which can be a feels-bad moment. And then we still have a couple counter spells with Make Disappear and then a full set of Fire Prophecy. At 3 mana we need to start making some tokens to target with our creativity. So we've got the full set of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which starts out with a Shaman that can also make more treasure, so it can potentially give us enough targets for a creativity. And the second chapter also very helpful in helping us find the missing pieces. Then we've got our Valakut Awakening. Shark Typhoon can be cycled for x equals 1 to make a 1-1 shark that we can target, or we can cast it for a larger amount to make a bigger shark token, which can also be an alternate win condition if the combo somehow doesn't pan out. And then at 4 mana, very important is a big score, discard a card as an additional cost to draw two and make two treasure tokens. And treasure tokens aren't very easy for the opponent to interact with, so that's usually the safest target for our creativity, unlike some of our creature tokens, which the opponent can maybe remove in response. And then windfall, essentially the same as big score, just costing double red, so we prefer having four copies of big score. And then of course a full set of creativity, which can also target opposing artifacts or creatures to take them out. Let's say the opponent has a shieldred in play, which will punish us for drawing, which we need to do to set up our combo. Then we can also take out Shieldred if we cast Creativity for X equals 3. Hopefully the opponent doesn't find a second copy, and then we can keep comboing without taking too damage for every draw step. And then of course our Sage and Locust God, which for the most part we want to put on the bottom of our library. We can of course also hard cast them if we happen to draw one and we don't have access to Fire Prophecy. We can still maybe cast one and then set up Creativity for X equals 1, but those games usually don't really work out for us. And then a mana base has a few goodies. We have two copies of the Legendary Crucible, as it can be channeled to make two 1-1s one at instant speed, so it can also be a way to set up our creativity for x equals 2. And then a Soaring City gives us a tiny bit more interaction. And then we've got a couple basics to potentially search up plenty of blue-red dual lands, since we do need triple red for creativity, so we need to make sure we have enough red sources for that to work. And two copies of Mutavolt, which can also potentially turn into a creature, and then we can target it with our creativity, so it can also come in handy. And of course, as a creature land, can also have other uses like pressuring opposing planeswalkers or blocking smaller creatures from the opponent. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Don't love the hand with uh, Locust God in it. Don't have Fire Prophecy to put it on the bottom. So I think we can take a mulligan. This is a bit better. And then probably hang on to Impulse to try and find a Treasure Maker for Creativity over Keeping Prophecy. 
even though Prophecy gives us some cheap removal, so it's possible that Shark Typhoon just isn't good enough, since we need more than one token, so we'd prefer to find a big score or windfall. Alright, Fable's good. Opponent on a red aggro deck, could also be black red. Okay, black red confirmed. So we could kill Harvester right now. I prefer hanging on to my Fire Prophecy in case we end up drawing one of the combo pieces, so for now we can just Impulse. And then against Red Black, the creatures are not going to be reliable for creativity, the treasure tokens are going to be more useful. And a Misery Shadow. Okay. Impulse finding. A bunch of stuff, don't need another creativity, make disappear, could maybe counter shieldred, in which we otherwise don't have a great way of answering. Or I could tap out for fable, and then impulse plus prophecy could still kill shieldred. Okay. Let's go for fable. And then we can put an upkeep stop to potentially kill a shieldred before having to draw with the second chapter. I don't think we trade since I would like to get the shaman going, even though taking five starts adding up. And it's gonna be a graveyard trespasser for now. So that we could also remove with fire prophecy. But we can draw first. And then one creativity can go, even though a Thought Seize could hit the other one. Tempted to keep another Fable and just get rid of a Fire Prophecy. And then Impulse is also online for just one mana if we'd like. Okay. So now I'm probably forced to Impulse kill Trespasser. So we can attack. And then, question is what to do afterwards. We're probably just going to play another Fable, so one Prophecy can go. Although now Shieldred's a concern. Could also just keep a Fire Prophecy to potentially kill one of the opponent's two creatures. And then... Hope to be able to big score next turn, because if we fable, of course, we use our only treasure. Could also prophecy now to try and hit my land drop for the turn, so we can maybe just creativity for two next turn if they tap out for a shieldred. In which case, probably kill harvester, which can kill our shaman. And discard fable, since big score is more likely to enable creativity, and we found a land. Okay. So next turn, if both of my creatures are still there, we could creativity for two, or if we draw a land, a creature and a treasure will get there as well. So we don't actually mind if they tap out for shield root, and there she is. Shadow attacks. So we should have the combo rolled up here. Although I guess shield root prevents us from comboing off since for every token we make, we also get drained for two, so hmm, that's actually a concern. So how do we deal with this situation? I could creativity the opponent's shield red as well, but I'm not going to be able to do it for enough to actually win as well. So I guess attack with the shaman, hope they block fire prophecy, finish off shield reds. If not, we'll have to reevaluate. Opponent takes it. So, let's see, if I creativity for x equals 3 now, I could target my two creatures and the opponent's shielded, and then just make an army of 1-1s, one even though I won't be able to attack with them right away, and hope they don't get another shielded. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Opponent gets another Misery Shadow, but now we can make all the 1-1s one we like.
And then what do we want to leave ourselves in hand with? Not quite sure. Don't expect Red Black to have a lot of sweepers for all these 1-1s. One -ones. And our opponent explodes, alright, so a second main combo, kind of unconventional, but yeah, that's the way around Shieldred. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems decent. Lots of spot removal to get our Fable token to keep attacking. And then Chapter 2 can get rid of removal if we don't need it. I'll start out with a tapped Steam Vents, don't want to take two for no reason, and I might want to hang on to Crucible as an enabler for creativity as well. Turn one play into initiates that we're happy to take out. And then we want to hang on to Prophecy in case we end up drawing one of the combo pieces. Aspirants, okay, so we can kill both creatures here if we'd like. And that seems reasonable. Initiate can also potentially mess with some of our artifacts or enchantments. So take out Aspirant for sure. Question is whether we also take out Initiate. Or maybe save it as a cheap answer to like a Thalia. But I'm okay just removing the early pressure. The Humans aggro deck is a deck that needs critical mass to be scary. Hope they don't have a turn 3 Brutal Cathar, which could exile our Shaman. Alright, there's a Cathar. Could have tried to play around it by waiting until turn 4, play Fable, keep up on my removal to kill Cathar so we get to keep our token. But uh, now we've got an alternative plan of just finding one of our four mana treasure makers. And we can always channel Crucible. Okay, so Prophecy probably kills Cathar now, get rid of Locust God. See what else we find. Big score, okay. So now we just need our creativity. Did not want it to switch to nighttime, which is why I main phase the removal spell. Adlin can hit pretty hard, but doesn't make a token right now. And a make disappear. Okay. So, could big score right now. Probably fine to wait. Let it switch to night, so now Brutal Cathar will enter as a 3-3 first strike. Could still counter it if I'd like, but I think it's a good opportunity to big score. And then Reflection can block the 1-1 token. And big score, probably discarding Make Disappear at this stage. In case we draw the author combo piece. One of them is already at the bottom, luckily. Take our draw. And there's another combo piece. Alright, so we can safely put both on the bottom now with another Fire Prophecy. Could finish off Adlin, although then it switches back to daytime. So instead. I could Impulse, see what we get, and then still potentially fire off two burn spells in the opponent's turn to keep it nighttime, kill Adelin. Okay, found creativity, so... Prophecy put Sage on the bottom, and then I just need an extra land perhaps, or we need Reflection to survive. Either works. So no attacks. And I can't think of too many cards that would mess up our combo. Bodyguard protecting the Moonrage Brutes. So I can block the 1-1. One -one. I guess if our opponent fizzles the Fire Prophecy with a Brave the Elements, then I won't get the chance to put something on the bottom. But they don't have a reason to cast it in response to Prophecy, they would wait for the second burn spell. So this should be extra safe to target Adlon here, as opposed to going for a Bodyguard and have them sack in a response, and then not getting the chance to put Sage on the bottom. Could still Hazard, but then we might be short on casting Creativity for two. So we'll just take our draw. And a land makes it even safer, in case they somehow had removal and instant speed here for our reflection. So target our two treasures, and the combo should be online. Eh, 
And yeah, I think Mono White is a decent matchup, especially with all the additional spot removal compared to the best of three pioneer build of this deck. Plenty of ways to stay alive, and then Mono White doesn't have really any way to disrupt our combo once we assemble it. And our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's got a Locust God in it, which is not really what we want. So is this a mulligan? Or do we hope to find a Fire Prophecy at some point? The rest of my hand is admittedly quite good. So we can maybe still get there. Probably gonna play Tapped Hazard so we can Impulse into Fable on 3. Opponent's Esper Colors. So it could be a more controlling deck. Could also end up hard casting Locust God. Alright, grab a Fire Prophecy. Problem is, if our opponent doesn't present any targets for it, I wouldn't be able to get rid of it. Opponent has a Dovin's Veto. Alright, so a very controlling deck here. Alright, hopefully we can big score. Opponent keeps up 4 mana. Gotta try. And Voltage Surge can go. Alright, that resolved at least. So we can try and hardcast Locust God. If our opponent exiles it, we won't be able to assemble the combo anymore. So I'm hesitant to go for it here. Just play a tap line and pass. Can maybe channel Crucible, give us more targets for uh, creativity. Can start applying a bit of pressure with it too. Okay. Let's uh, hit for two, see what happens. Yeah, I'm somewhat tempted to just hard cast Locust God here. Worst case scenario, I can double Voltage Surge so it doesn't get exiled. That resolved. Bone makes a token. So farewell could be bad here. Supreme Verdict is fine. Get our Locust God back. And try again. So farewell exiling our graveyard would, I guess, still get rid of the Locust God even if we kill it in response. Get to take our turn, make a token. And then we can also activate Locust God now to make an additional 1-1. One, one. Voltage Surge can go. Not gonna attack with the god itself to play around Wandering Emperor, but uh, tokens can get in there. And a Deluge, that resolves. So if our opponent does go for something like Farewell, we can still Impulse, try and hit our 2-mana Make Disappear. So our opponent keeps up a bunch of mana once again. There's creativity. So we could go for the combo here. Don't have counterspell backup, but uh, probably no huge downside for trying. Could do X equals 2 in case they can somehow blow up my treasure. Or I guess I can do 2, 1 targeting a token, 1 targeting a treasure. Which is less likely to be messed up here. And then if they kill the token in response, we don't care. Opponent cycles. Okay, down to four mana. That resolves. Get our Sage. And hopefully no instant speed removal on Sage here. Can discard a Voltage Surge. And keep going. 
and our opponent explodes. All right, so we got there with a the combo, kind of through an unconventional path onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, hand seems fine. Probably start with an Awakening tapped on one. Turn two, we've got a couple instants to choose from. And then Big Score can now set up Creativity, perfect. I guess now that we drew Creativity, I might want to hang on to Awakening to make sure we have a way to shuffle combo pieces on the bottom. But I also need my lands to come into play untapped, so... Hopefully we'll find a Fire Prophecy if we do find a combo piece. Is your opponent with turn one planes? Is it white aggro? Is it something else? Could be an aura deck. And yeah, Paradise Ruid we won't be able to take out. So, can maybe counter an aura here. Or combo can easily deal 40 damage and leave us with a lot of 1-1s. So I'm not concerned about opponent gaining a life. And light pause, we just want to counter in case they have a protection spell. So that should buy us a lot of time. Can even fire impulse the Paradise Druid now. Audacity, sure. Yeah, still happy to just kill it and leave them without any creatures to enchant. Okay, so that was a good start for us. And I don't expect much interaction for our combo. So we should have all the time in the world to set it up. And, uh, yeah, we have the lands, we have the big score. Maybe I want another Fiery Impulse. Okay, pass it back. So our opponent needs to kill us right now. Another way it could go wrong is if we draw one of our two creatures next turn, but at least we have a Prophecy to maybe put it back on the bottom. So we have most angles covered. Sram still potentially allows a one-mana Boseju, which could target our treasure token. So I'm hoping they completely tap out. Sentinel's Eyes. Okay. So they could still have a one-mana Boseju, unless we kill Sram. But I'm still gonna big score here. I could big score and then next turn maybe kill Sram before going off. So do I maybe discard Crucible then, since I want Impulse as a cheap answer for Sram, but keep Prophecy in case we draw a combo piece? Alright. Might be overthinking it here, but I think we have the time to play it safe. So we'll Impulse Sram now. And then we have an actual Impulse to hit our land drop for next turn. Or I could uh, fire it off now to hit our land drop for the turn. Could also grab another big score to make even more treasure. Although land should suffice, assuming our opponent doesn't keep up Boseju once again. Didn't seem like they had it, honestly, so... Just gonna grab the land and pass. And another light pause we can try and take out. Cartouche. So in response, let me just uh, take out light pause. Does not seem like her opponent's hanging on to an instant here. One card left. And a Sentinel's Eyes. Alright, so now the coast is definitely clear. If we draw combo piece, there's still Prophecy. And we didn't, so this should be good enough. Get our Sage and our Locust God. Make all the 1-1s one -ones we want and attack for the win. So, could have potentially won a turn sooner, but felt like we were far enough ahead that I could play it extra safe. So this might take a second. I'll use a spacebar here to click through it a little faster. And our opponent concedes. Alright, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw. Not loving Locust God in my opener. Even though we have a big score, only two lands is a little sketchy. This seems better. Now, sadly, I have to get rid of a card. And uh, we're on the draw here. Could see getting rid of Fable, so big score is our enabler for creativity. We've got early removal and a bit of interaction with Make Disappear, so we don't fall behind. Or I could keep Fable, which has its own advantages over Big Score potentially, too. But I think Big Score is a more reliable enabler. And this way we keep the most interaction possible. And in Best of One, you typically want as much interaction as you can get your hands on. Spikefield Hazards. I might play Tapped on turn 3, but for now, could still come in handy as removal. Up against turn 1 Den, could be red-black, could be mono-red aggro, without a 1-drop. Karizev, okay. So, doesn't currently die to Impulse, can eventually take it out once we enable Spell Mastery. Or now Fire Prophecy could take it out as well. I think I'm gonna pass first, maybe make disappear something this turn. And then hang on to Prophecy in case we draw into a combo piece. Our Eidolon we probably want to counter here, so we don't take any damage. So we'll take three. And an Awakening, so... Could either play Tapped Awakening or Tapped Hazard. Given that we have a Fire Prophecy, I'm less likely to need Awakening as a 3-mana instance, so we'll try it this way. Now I would still prefer to keep Prophecy until after I big score. So, opponent plays a Swift Spear, hesitant to kill it when they still have mana untapped. Opponent goes for Kumano. Alright, if their last card is a 1-mana instant, I can get punished for going for Impulse, trying to kill Swift Spear. Maybe the safest move is just Fire Prophecy Kari Zav anyway, and then hope not to draw any of our combo pieces in the next couple draw steps, which I can buy. And then, uh, I guess we can let that resolve now. Alright, let's Prophecy Kari Zav, and then I don't think I need Hazard, but Impulse will be... Quite useful. So take two. Okay, so just need creativity now. I might cast both impulses here. Ooh, Ferocidon would kind of counter our combo since we would take one damage every time an insect enters. And it will enter with four toughness, so I actually wouldn't mind digging for a counter spell. Although I guess her opponent can pay two. Hmm. Yeah, that's annoying, so we'll need another burn spell to take it out. So now I might be better off just going for the big score anyway. Discarding, let's say, Crucible. And keep my card draw to find more burn spells for Ferocidon before we combo off. So yeah, that added an extra layer of uh, problems that we need to solve. Could also creativity for enough to just kill Ferocidon, which may be the move as well. So we found creativity, which is great. And now between Prophecy and Impulse, we could kill Ferocidon. So we could just play another big score, have four treasures to cast creativity for three next turn. Could also Impulse to hit my land drop and then keep up more mana for interaction. So maybe we'll try that. Opponent animates Den, so can impulse the Den here. And then take seven. So yeah, going for big score might have worked out a little bit better. Found a land. So now I can still creativity for three killing Frostalon, and that should do it. Why 
One, two, three. I guess they could still hit another Frostodon. That would be the nightmare scenario. Okay, just a Bone Crusher Giant. That's fine. So we get to keep going. Okay. So it ended up being a pretty close game with that Frostodon showing up. Otherwise, Monored is a very winnable matchup. You've got a lot of cheap removal. And the combo finish can close out the game before they amass enough burn spells to kill us. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we have a Locust God in hand, although Prophecy can put it on the bottom. So, not a perfect hand, but I think it's keepable. And at least by putting God on the bottom, we are uh, unlikely to draw it again, since our deck doesn't really shuffle. Okay, plenty of Prophecies. Opponent on a green deck, so we should be expecting some creatures to take out. Pack leader, perfect target. Don't think it's a matchup where we want to necessarily uh, hard cast our Locust God, which was an option too. We are missing our land drop here, so it could impulse to find it, but then our shields down on make disappear. And our opponent could resolve a scary 3 drop that we cannot kill with our burn spells. So I'm tempted to hang on to make disappear here. Something like an old growth troll, for instance. Okay, steel leaf also fine to counter. And then now we have to hit our land drop. Found Shivan Reef, Fable also an option, but I think we need the land more. Okay, so we're still at 20. Putin doesn't have any creatures in play, but that's about to change. And uh, Voltage Surge and Prophecy don't necessarily deal with some of the larger green creatures. And then we still need to find both creativity and a way to make tokens. So, not loving my position necessarily. Bone goes for a Lovestruck Beast just as a 5-5. Can probably kill the 1-1 one, one token if they have another beast to enable it. Or they might be setting up a Great Henge. Um, to draw cards, which we don't really care about. So let's impulse to once again hit our land drop and uh, grab a coast. And then next turn we can big score, hopefully finding creativity. And yeah, there's a great henge like we suspected. Into a scavenging ooze, which we can take out with a voltage surge before it gets a counter. Also an argument for keeping the more mana efficient voltage surge in hand. Um, and fire off Fire Prophecy here, which is maybe fine, and then get rid of a Voltage Surge so we can draw and still keep a Prophecy in case we draw Sage. So we'll keep a mix of both in hand. So still at 20, hitting our land drops now, and just missing Creativity, which we can dig for with our big score now, probably discarding a land company. Don't think we need to response with big score. Finds ooze and pack leader. Opponent draws too, so I could big score and then see what we find off of it in case I need to prophecy the pack leader before they get a counter, um, which is reasonable. Scavenging ooze can eat some creatures now to grow before we try and take it out with a uh, to damage Voltage Surge. So, let's big score discard land. Although, of course, if we Prophecy, we would have to sack a treasure, which we don't necessarily want to do. Okay, found Creativity. So, no need to Prophecy. Question is if I Voltage Surge Scavenging Ooze just to force them to spend one green mana. The upside of that is that they wouldn't be able to keep up Boseju. Although, I don't think they've played a land for the turn yet, so they could still grow the ooze and then 
keep up with Seiju afterwards, because that's probably the only way they can interact with a combo here. Okay, opponent plays a Mystic. That's fine. And plays a land to tap out for another Mystic. Okay, so Boseju is not a concern, so the only way this can go wrong is if we draw exactly Sage of the Falls, since Locust God's on the bottom. So hopefully that doesn't happen. And uh, I assume we're dead if we draw Sage, but I might as well spend my mana killing a Mystic here. Okay, good. So creativity for two. And get our combo online. And there we go. So yeah, another creature matchup where the opponent doesn't really have any interaction for the combo. And our early removal is usually good enough to buy ourselves enough time to set it up. So this uh, Locust God Sage combo seems pretty well positioned in best of one at least. While there are some hate cards like Shieldred and Ferocidon that can randomly show up which uh, wouldn't be a concern if you're on the Pioneer build with Xenagos and World Spine Worm. There are also a few advantages to having Locust God as a creature to potentially hardcast like we did against Control. Still a pretty good creature if the game does drag out, and as a Control deck we're pretty good at dragging out the game. Alright, our opponent realizes what's happening and scoops it up. So yeah, I'm quite impressed by this blue-red creativity deck. Faced a wide variety of matchups, but most of them are creature decks where the early spot removal buys us enough time to get to the late game, and the deck seems consistent enough at finding the missing combo pieces. So quite happy with where the deck ended up. So definitely recommend it for best of one. Best of three is going to be a different animal, as additional uh, hate cards can come into play, and then you'll have to adjust the deck to have more sideboard cards to maybe change your game plan up, and maybe add some other win conditions that aren't built around the combo. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.